Good morning. As you can hear, I am having a bit of a struggle this morning. My asthma has been acting up. Sorry, I'm looking for my asthma medicine. I don't know where it went. Like I was saying, um, I am about, I just got home from work and I'm gonna go to bed soon. But my asthma has been driving me bananas because of the IVF medicine and Lupron and Intrax with a lot of things. I can't be on, <coughs> sorry. I can't be on my normal allergy medicine and my asthma is really triggered by pollen and it is very bad pollen wise here. And I just got off all my medicine for IVF so that's why all of a sudden it's now acting up even though it's like not what you would consider peak pollen. Oh, I just found my medicine, oh my gosh. I just took out a brand new vial of the stuff that I use. I might as well show you. So this is the medicine I use. This is the, um, Love albuterol. I have albuterol as well, but I hate the way it makes me feel like shaky. So I asked if they had anything else, and they said that they have levibutrol, which supposedly makes you less shaky, but I don't think it really works that well. So, um, <clears throat> but I'm finishing up the back. The crazy thing with Lupron is it says you're not supposed to use any of this stuff with it because it can cause heart palpitations, but you gotta do what you gotta do when you can't breathe. For me, I've always been a cougher, not a wheezer, as we say, um, in my world. A lot of people like wheeze when they get asthma, but for me, I just cough and sound really out of breath, and I can like feel the tightness. And if you listen really close, then you can kind of hear maybe a wheeze. I don't know. What do you guys think? <sighs> yeah, I guess there's a little bit of a wheeze there, but not so bad. I painted my nails, by the way. How cute are those? All right. I'm going to show you this cool little thing. This is my nebulizer, the inspiration. I have asthma and it doesn't usually get triggered very easily, so I don't use this very often. But this is going to be my jam because it says that it's not good to use the asthma medicine because it can cause heart problems. So what I'm doing is this is a vial, right? This is a vial of the levibutrol that I just showed you guys. Um, I used a third of it, no, a quarter of it last night um, because my asthma was bad then too. And I'm going to use a quarter of it again today. So this is not a, a full um, dose. You're supposed to use the whole vial when you have asthma symptoms. But this is what I do. And my doctor said that this was fine. Because um, I only like to use as much as I absolutely need to open up my airway. So I, I'm going to put this on and use it. And then I'll be back in a second. So, <coughs> here we go. There goes the mist. So much better, guys. So I was gonna say, so actually, I wound up using more of the vial than I thought I would because I used that little bit and I still, <sighs> and I still didn't feel a whole lot because, like I said, um, I don't really feel like everything's super in control. If I have to use my nebulizer again, I actually think I might call the IVF team and just let them know and be like, hey, um, they didn't tell me not to use my asthma medicine, but when I looked it up online, it did say that albuterol can interact negatively with, with um, Lupron and cause heart palpitations. And I feel fine, but I want to make sure I'm not like going against what I need to do or if there's something else because my asthma doctor would be mad. They'd be like, your asthma's not in control, like you're not following your control protocol. Because um, <clears throat> usually this time of year, I'm on Zyrtec and Flonase twice a day, and if needed, Flovent. So Flonase is like the nasal spray that's over the counter now, but it used to be a prescription. And Flo, Flovent is an asthma medicine. So I don't always have to be on Flovent. Sometimes it's controlled well with the corticosteroid, which is the Flonase and the Zyrtec, but I can't be on the Flonase. I'm just like muddling through it, but um, <clears throat> but I will definitely, and I was taking Flonase before for spring, and I was doing great. <sighs> and I just went off of it, and I don't know if it's like a new kind of pollen that's blooming right now, like if it's a different, because I have different pollen allergies, a lot of pollen allergies, so there's like early spring pollinators, and then like summer pollinators, I don't know. I don't really remember, but um, sorry, my AC is kicking on. Um, I don't really know, but I'm doing my best I can. I, um, the AC, by the way, is new as of last year. Um, and we only used it in August. So 
it's only been used a couple months if anything and I just looked at the filter last night and I cleaned the filter and everything was good so I know it's not that all our windows are shut um, the, we have a HEPA filter that was in the living room here where I am doing this video, um, but we moved it to our bedroom so that I can sleep a little bit better. So that's what we've been doing. I'm doing everything I can. I even looked up, as you guys know, I've been like using essential oils. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I've been using some essential oils to help with like headaches and nausea and other symptoms that you can get or side effects you can get with the Lupron and the birth control and whatever. Oh, so much better. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and you can't really use essential oils to treat asthma because there's some evidence that like the scent particles even from that can trigger more asthma. So I'm not going to mess with it. I don't want to mess with my asthma. Um, so I'm trying everything I can, but I haven't found anything good. What do you guys think? Have you ever been? Do you have asthma or, or allergies? Have you been through an IVF protocol and be worried about what you can and can't take? So my gist is, if I have to use my nebulizer, this is going to be my, um, if I have to use it again when I wake up tonight, I'm going to call somebody because I know for my asthma, the rule is if I have to use my nebulizer or my inhaler more than three times a week, then it's out of control and I need to do something about it because they don't want you using it more than that. So anyways, um, which makes sense. And I also don't want to use something that can interact with the Lupron. And it doesn't make like the Lupron less effective. It just makes it so that you can have like heart palpitations, which is obviously scary. I don't want to do that. So, and I also want to be healthy. So I guess it just makes sense for me to call somebody if I'm still having asthma. Um, I'm feeling better today. I probably because I have to like tell myself to stay awake. So today I have at 11 a.m., and I get home from work at 8 a.m. as a night shift nurse. I have to stay up an extra three hours today, which I'm not thrilled about. But anyways, um, so I have, at 11 a.m., I have an anesthesia consult on the phone from MGH. Um, it's because I have a severe latex allergy and other allergies, and so they want to do a consult with me and make sure they understand everything about it and make sure that that's not going to be an issue. And, um, and I had a really good talk with the nurse on the phone yesterday, which I'm so happy with because we were actually getting frustrated that, I don't know if I mentioned this in another video, but like either like the secretary or the medical assistant or the IVF nurse, I'm not sure who it is, but there's one person that's been working with us and working with our main doctor on at MGH. And, and like they have kind of dropped the ball on a couple things and it's made us frustrated and, um, and like just not not thrilled with our care and so we were getting frustrated with that and I was like I don't get it we started out so great with MGH what is happening and then I finally was able to talk to an IVF nurse on the phone yesterday for like 20 minutes which was amazing I actually stayed up late like for me late like I stayed up till 10 a.m. and called them and they called me back um, which was awesome and I got all my questions answered and I was so happy because I was nervous about the egg retrieval and about fasting the night beforehand because I'm usually awake at night and so I was like either you need to give me something because I'm not worried about not eating like I've fasted before um, like I'm Catholic I can do that but the not drinking water or any liquids thing for eight hours I was like that's gonna be a problem because I'm a big water drinker so I told them I was like you're either going to need to give me sleep medicine so I'll sleep during those eight hours because it's like after 10 p.m. you can't have anything to eat or drink so you either need to give me a sleep medicine so I will sleep or you need to like tell me that I can have like ice chips or like something or I need to have my procedure in the afternoon. So they were like, well, none of that's going to work. We need to do your procedure first thing in the morning because you have an allergy, which means like everything gets cleaned and sterilized in the evening by like the team there at MGH. And then so like they always do allergies first thing in the morning so that there's no traces of anything anywhere. So I was like, OK, well, that makes sense. So my procedure is going to be like 7 a.m. Um, and which means we have to get, we have to leave here at like a 5 a.m. Because even though we only live, like technically speaking, we live 30 minutes outside of Boston. I would even say less than that. Like if you want to talk about the outskirts of Boston, we're probably 20 minutes in the outskirts of Boston. But like from MGH, we're probably 35 minutes from MGH with there's no traffic. I've never had that happen. And especially in the morning. We live south of Boston, and commuting into Boston is a nightmare. And you have to be at your procedure an hour before the procedure. So we probably have to be there at 6, which means we probably have to leave at, like, 4.30, maybe? Good God, man. So <laughs> I don't even know if I'm even going to get any sleep. But 
anyways, so I can't eat or drink after 10 p.m. And they said they're going to talk to the doctors and give me something. So I'm not worried about it. But anyway, so I talked to her about that. And I talked to her about my worry with my allergies and with egg retrieval and that I'm nervous about it. And so I think it was good. I think we're all on the same page and I feel good about everything. And she made me feel so much better, which was amazing. Um, because the last nurse that we talked to is actually my husband that talked to her. Um, I gave him a bunch of questions to ask because I was asleep during the day and he had to call them in the afternoon or something. So he called them and was like, and one of my questions was that I get nauseous the drop of a hat and you're giving me anesthesia. Like, I'm going to be nauseous. I know I am. I've never had anesthesia, but from what I've heard, like, that is one of the issues people have. And I'm like, I don't want to be throwing up continuously. Let's do something about this. And so he called and the nurse or whoever he talked to was like, oh yeah, we don't give anything for nausea. And that was, and he was like, really? Because that might kind of be a problem. And, he, and they were like, no, we just don't give anything for nausea. Which I thought was such a weird answer. I was like, what? And then I talked to the nurse yesterday and they're like, everybody gets Zofran. Every single human that comes in to get egg retrieval gets Zofran. And I was like, okay, that makes me feel so much better because that's what I needed to hear, that they were going to take care of it. But anyway, so there was a bunch of like little questions like that that, that like didn't get answered before. So. Um, so now I'm very happy with the care. And she was so amazing on the phone and like so reassuring and made me feel so much better and like relaxed and calm. So I'm, I'm feeling really good about that. But it was just really funny that like this other person was not giving us adequate information or accurate information. So I'm happy that all of that worked out. What else? I am on... Day seven of Lupron. Yes, either day six or day seven. Let's say day seven. I can't, I honestly can't remember. I'm so tired right now because I just got home from work. Um, and I'm having some like really weird reactions to the Lupron. Like the area around it gets like red and raised up. It looks like almost like a mis like a bad bruise or a mosquito bite after I use the Lupron. And I, and I like, before people are like, oh my gosh, you have to do it this way or that way or whatever. Dude, people, I am a nurse. I have a four-year degree in doing this stuff. So I, like, I know what I'm doing. I have done the subcutaneous injections before. I've never seen this happen before. I am an extremely reactive person. Like, I have so many food allergies, and I, as you saw, I have asthma, um, and I have a latex allergy. So, like, I know I have a lot of allergies, and I know there's no latex in this, so I don't think it's that. But it was just, it's just weird. And I, and it, burns so bad going in. Like, does anyone else have this happen? It burns like the mother. Literally the first time I did it, I was in the bathroom at work on my night shift and I literally under my breath was like, mother! <laughs> it just scared the guinea pigs. And it was really funny and like luckily I was like, you know, alone in the bathroom but it was just really funny. Like no one could hear me but I was like, oh my gosh, people would be like, what the hell is going on in the bathroom that someone's like yelling swears. So, but it burned so bad. It was, like, a really bad, like, bee sting. That's what it felt like. Um, so now I ice it. And I iced it beforehand, too, but it was, like, this tiny little ice pack. And now I use, like, this big hulking ice pack. Um, so that helps. And if I numb the area completely, then there's no burning. But last night, for example, like, I was in a rush, and I only iced it for, like, two minutes instead of, like, five. And it burned so bad. So I just don't know what is going on. I don't know if I'm sensitive to Lupron. But if anyone else has any of those experiences, please let me know because I'm such at a loss here. Um, but anyway, so I'm on Lupron for, I want to say 20 days. Yes, 20 days. So one week down and basically two weeks to go, uh, 13 days to go. So that makes me feel good. I'm, um, I was looking at our IVF calendar and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're halfway through IVF already. I can't believe that. This Friday, so today is Tuesday morning. And this Friday morning, I have my baseline ultrasound. And I mean, I know days are kind of irrelevant for you guys because I'm always behind in editing. So I never know like when, what day I'm going to get these up on. Maybe like, so anyways, but just for my own records and for you guys. So just for a point of view. So today's Tuesday, my time. Um, Tuesday morning. Oh, sorry. I just got crampy. Oh. And I'm supposed to be getting my period, which is also why I keep getting these, like, random cramps. But anyways, uh, so from my perspective, today is Tuesday morning, and on Friday morning is my baseline ultrasound, 
um, and then we will go from there. And if everything's good, then I start stims, and I do stims for 10 days, and then we got egg retrieval, and then five days later, they put an embryo back inside of me, and I'm poopo. Term that means pregnant until proven otherwise. So I'm very excited about the stuff coming forward. So my main side effects, so when I started Lupron, the side effects were headache and nausea. Now that I've been on it for a little while, those have subsided. I do have occasional, like, small hot flashes, but, like, right now I'm feeling warm, but it's not so bad that I'm, like, dripping my clothes off. Like, I'm okay. I feel fine. Um, it's just, like, kind of annoying. I'm just, like, all of a sudden, like, oh, it's warm in here. Um, but it, even though, like, the, you know, the uh, thermostat says it's, like, 74 degrees because we have the AC going, as you can hear on and off in the background. Um... But anyways, it's just, you know, random hot flashes from the loop run, but that hasn't been so bad. And now I have the headache under control because I do the Tylenol an hour before I do the shot. I think I mentioned that. That's been my protocol for myself is I do Tylenol, regular strength, an hour before I actually do the injection, and then I don't get a headache. Um, the nausea's been under control, knock on wood. I just stopped birth control yesterday. It was my last pill. No. Two days ago. Sorry, I am really tired. Two days ago was my last pill of birth control, so I've been off for, for two days, and um, I'm just waiting for my period, but they said I don't have to get one. It doesn't matter. Like, it's just, you know, if you bleed, you bleed. That's great. Um, and if not, whatever, because I'm on loop run, so I might not. But uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, so the headache and nausea has been under control. The hot flushes I don't really care about. And then the only thing that's really sucked has been how tired I am. Like, Next level tiredness. Like, look at these bags underneath of this, these eyes. Oh, and you can see the crease in my nose from me. I was rubbing it because of my allergies. That's hilarious. You know, there's actually a name for that crease when you have it in little kids because it's a sign that they have environmental allergies because little kids can't always be like, I have a pollen allergy. Like, you know, you have to figure it out, and that's one of the symptoms is having that line across your nose. So... There you go, I got that line. I forget what it's called from nursing school, but... Ooh, ah, speaking of tired, I gotta go to bed soon. Or at least, like, lay in bed while I wait for my anesthesia call. I have been so tired. Like, for example, I don't know if anyone out there watches Game of Thrones, but me and my husband were watching Game of Thrones. Yes, we're a little behind. Please don't give me crap. But anyways, we're a little bit behind, but we're catching up on Game of Thrones. So I was really excited to watch it last night with him, and we're all sitting on the couch, all meaning, like, my brother-in-law's also visiting. He's in college. So he was visiting, and we're all sitting on the couch, like, watching Game of Thrones really into it. And it's, like, a loud TV show. And there's, like, dragons and fire and war and it's just, like, rampage. And it's a very loud, very exciting TV show. Uh, it's not like I was just watching, you know, PBS and fell asleep to a documentary. No offense, because I watched, I do that, too. But I'm just saying... This was Game of Thrones. Like, this is an intense show. And I was so tired, I don't even remember falling asleep. I was just lying on the couch, and I'm like, I'm so comfortable right now. And it was 9 p.m., and I was going to work in an hour, and I fell asleep. And I took a nice 20-minute nap and woke up, and it was the end of Game of Thrones. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what did I miss? And my husband's like, yeah, how did you fall? And, like, both of the guys are sitting on the couch, and they're like, how did you fall asleep during that? Like, she was getting attacked by dragons. How did you fall asleep? So, um, so anyway, so I thought that was really funny. So my tiredness has been, like, next level tiredness. I've been sleeping for, like, nine to ten hours a day, depending on the day, taking naps. Sometimes the naps aren't even when I plan on there being naps. And yes, I work as a night shift nurse, um, and I've been cutting down my caffeine a lot so that it's within a safe range for when I am pregnant, because not that I drank so much coffee that it was unsafe, but I'm trying to stay under 100 milligrams now, um, just out of, you know, like for safety, first trimester, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyways, I used to just have like probably more like 200 milligrams. Um, throughout the day. I'd have like a coffee when I got up and then a coffee in the middle of the night to keep, stay awake and whatever. So now I'm down to no coffee when I wake up. So I'm more tired and wake up slower when I get up now. And then the coffee that I have in the middle of the night, I don't even do coffee in the middle of the night anymore. I either do half calf or I do um, tea or something like that in the middle of the night. Last night I actually um, had chocolate covered coffee beans and I like measured out how many milligrams was in each and I had 100 milligrams because they were so good. So that was my treat to myself. But so I'm, that's why I'm feeling so like good now even though I am really tired. It's because I had chocolate covered coffee beans at like 1 a.m. 1.30 in the morning <laughs> and it's now 
9 a.m. Uh, yeah, 9, 10 a.m., and I had them at 1.30, so they're not really in my system much anymore, but I'm hoping they'll keep me through to 11. <sighs> so, what else was I saying? God, I gotta catch you guys up on so much. Sorry, this is becoming a ridiculously long video, but I just had to catch you guys up on so much stuff. What else is happening? What else is... Oh, so I was just talking about my tiredness. Yeah, so it just... I've been sleeping 9, 10 hours, taking naps. Uh, luckily, I don't nap, like, during my night shift, or I don't feel like I need to nap. Um, I've never been driving and been like, oh, I can't keep my eyes open. Like, nothing like that. It's just more when I don't have caffeine in my system and I'm comfortable. Oop, lights out. Like last night sitting on the couch watching freaking Game of Thrones. Now I have to re-watch Game of Thrones, that episode, because now I'm behind. But <laughs> anyways, so that's it for now, guys. Uh, <sighs> so please excuse my other vlogs. Their lighting was not nearly as good as this one because I took them like in our bedroom or as I was getting ready for bed or whatever. Um, but obviously this morning I have to stay up till 11, so I decided to just sit in my living room for a minute and like film this and do my asthma treatment and like eat my bagel and stuff. But I am gonna head in there now. So, um, but I apologize for the terrible lighting and everything um, and lack of fanciness, uh, the ridiculously casualness that is these um, last few videos. But I guess that's just life, and that's just IVF, um, and, you know, that's how it's going to be for right now, and then hopefully I'll get in some, like, actual sit-down videos, too. Like, I hope to have vlogs of things that are actually happening, like, in real life, so you can see the excitement and anticipation and all the crazy that's happening in real life, real now, like, the reactions to things, like, when we got our IVF box and stuff, the meds. But then I also hope to, like, hopefully I'll have time if I'm not sleeping constantly, Hopefully I'll have time to do some sit-down videos too where, you know, I'm actually explaining how things happened or what's going on behind the scenes because I know people like that too. Like, I like that too. Like, I, I know a lot of people love just straight-up vlogs, but I really like to sit people sit-down videos because I feel like they can digest their thoughts a little bit better. Like, I don't just like to see what's happening with their lives. I want to know, like, what their internal thought process is because that's the thing that's always made me curious about people going through stuff like this. It's like, what is their internal thought process of, you know, this is happening and now what's this step and all that that comes along with it and how they're doing. You know, people in vlogs don't always talk about, oh yeah, I slept during Game of Thrones last night. So, you know, and if there's anything else you guys are curious about, um, definitely let me know. I might be doing like a general Q&A or whatever. If you have any guys, if you have any specific questions, leave them down below and maybe I'll do an official Q&A video or whatever. Um, but that is it for now. This is a crazy long, like 18 minute or whatever it is. I don't even see what the time clock is on my camera, but um, a crazy long video. I can tell by my regular clock on the wall. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys have been liking these vlog craziness thingies, and I hope you guys are enjoying the journey because we're just muddling through <laughs> and getting through it, but um, I'm excited by everything, and I will certainly keep you guys updated and let you know what happens, and that's it for now, guys, and if you like, subscribe. Bye!